You're welcome to Pals. It's Prof. Sanyamu's Anatomy Lecture Series. If you're just joining us and you've not subscribed, please be part of this anatomy family where we make anatomy simple. Just press the subscribe button and notification bell and be the first to get all the amazing videos we are making in all the systems in anatomy. You're welcome. Let's go to class. In today's lecture, we'll be looking at triangles of the neck. In considering this topic, we will be identifying each of these triangles, their borders, roof, floor, and contents. First, why study triangles of the neck? This is because there are several structures within the neck and also passing through the neck. Dividing this neck into smaller regions will enable quick and easy identification of these structures. This division into smaller regions is done using some clear landmarks around the neck, some of which are bones, muscles, and imaginary lines. Identifying these landmarks will enable us to identify these triangles quicker. We will start with some of the bones. The first bone we will look at is the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone is found below the mandible. This bone gives attachment to several muscles in this region. The next bone is the mandible itself. Here we are seeing the base of the mandible, giving prominent landmarks to some of the triangles we will be talking about, and also even the angle of the mandible. Our next landmark is the mastoid process at this point, and also the styloid process. These two processes are all extensions of the temporal bone of the skull. Other landmarks relevant to our study are the thyroid cartilage, which is below the hyoid bone, and then the manibrum, and also part of the clavicle. Now we'll look at some of the soft tissues that will also be relevant in describing the various triangles. The first is this triangular muscle running from the occipital bone down to the lateral part of the clavicle. This muscle is called the trapezius. The next muscle is this big muscle at the side of the neck running from the manibrum and clavicle to the mastoid process. This big muscle is called the stenocleid, the mastoid muscle. Two other muscles that will play key roles are the digastric muscle and the homohyoid muscle. First, the digastric muscle. This muscle has two bellies, the anterior belly and the posterior belly. Both bellies are joined by an intermediate rounded tendon at this point. This common tendon is connected to the hyoid bone. The posterior belly picks origin from the mastoid process and stops at the intermediate tendon. And the anterior belly picks origin from the intermediate tendon and stops at the digastric fossa seen in the lower border of the body of mandible. Let's look at the homohyoid. This is a flat strap of muscle that has two bellies too, the superior belly and inferior belly. This runs down from its attachment on the inferior border of the hyoid bone and it passes beneath the stenocleid mastoid muscle. From its origin to stenocleid mastoid muscle is the superior belly. From the stenocleid mastoid muscle down is the inferior belly. The inferior belly runs to its attachment on the transverse scapular ligament and upper border of the scapula. Now we are ready to describe the triangles of the neck. So a side view of the neck will show a near quadrilateral outline giving four borders. These borders are the superior, inferior, anterior and posterior borders. The passage of stenocleid mastoid muscle obliquely from the clavicle and sternum to its point of insertion of the mastoid process and the occipital bone divides this quadrilateral space into two main triangles. The triangle in front of this muscle is the anterior triangle and the one behind it is the posterior triangle. We will start with the anterior triangle of the neck. This triangle is defined by the following borders. Anteriorly, 
is bounded by the median line of the neck. Posteriorly, the anterior margin of the sternocleid mastoid. Superiorly, by the inferior border of the mandible and its projection to the mastoid process. That's the imaginary line connecting it to the mastoid process. The superior border of this triangle forms the base of this triangle while the apex is formed at the manibrum sternum. The anterior triangle can be divided into two main areas based on the position of the hyoid bone. We see the area above the hyoid bone called the suprahyoid area and then we find another area below the hyoid bone called the infrahyoid area. But a more popular and common subdivision is the subdivision of this anterior triangle into smaller triangles, four smaller triangles, by the passage of these two muscles, the digastric muscle and the omohyoid muscle. These smaller triangles are 1. the digastric triangle, 2. submental, the muscular and the carotid triangles. In the suprahyoid area, we will be seeing two of these triangles. These triangles are the submental and submandibular triangle or digastric triangle. We will start with digastric triangle. It is called digastric triangle because it is bounded by two bellies of digastric muscle, the anterior belly and the posterior belly. It is also called submandibular triangle because it is located just below the mandible and contains the submandibular gland. Let's look at the boundaries. The superior boundaries formed by the base of the mandible and a line joining the angle of the mandible to the mastoid process. Posterior inferiorly, we will find the posterior belly of the gastric and the stylohyoid muscle. The stylohyoid muscle is the muscle running from the styloid process to the hyoid bone. And then anterior inferiorly, we will find the anterior belly of the digastric. The roof is formed by the skin, superficial fascia, platysma muscle, and the deep fascia. Its floor is formed by two muscles. One is the mylohyoid and the other is the hyoglossus muscle. Now the contents. The contents within the digastric triangle can be divided into the contents in the anterior part and those in the posterior part. We will first look at those in the anterior part. The major content in the anterior part is the submandibular salivary gland. We will also see the submandibular lymph nodes, submental artery, myelohyoid vessels, and then facial vein. In the posterior part, we will see the parotid gland and other structures such as external carotid artery, the styloid process, vagus nerve, internal carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and some of these muscles that are a little deeply placed, like the styloglossus and stylopharynges. We will move to the next triangle, that's the submental triangle. All the triangles, both in the anterior triangle and posterior triangle, are all paired, except for this submental triangle. Submental triangle is located between the two anterior digastric muscles. Its apex is at the chin, while its base is the body of the hyoid bone. The floor is formed by the myelohyoid muscles. The content of this triangle is basically the submental lymph node. And these, these nodes drain the floor of the mouth. We can also see small veins that unite to form the anterior jugular vein. Well, this is where we will draw the cutting for this class. We are not done on the lectures on triangles of the neck. We have the remaining part of this class that is coming in part two of the same lecture. So please don't go away. Make sure you pick the second part of this lecture and complete our lecture on triangles of the neck. Thank you so much. If you have not joined us, please make sure you press the subscribe button below and join this amazing anatomy family where we make anatomy simple. Thank you. Bye for now. See you in my next class.